Dear friends, welcome to Know Thyself YouTube channel. Good morning. Hope you are all staying safe and keeping well. I sincerely thank all of you who have subscribed to this channel and follow the channel. If you find the contents of the videos uploaded in this channel useful, please subscribe to this channel and click the notification or the bell icon so that you can be notified when a video is uploaded. Kindly share the videos with others or on the internet. In the last episode of Know Your Mind segment, we stated and explained three common unconscious and conscious biases and clarified how we can prevent or minimize their impacts on our unconscious thought processes and conscious decision making. In this episode, we speak about another three common unconscious biases, namely contrast effect bias, disability bias, and gender or sexism bias, and how we can prevent or minimize their influence on us. 7. Contrast effect bias. Contrast effect bias consists in comparing two things rather than assessing their merits individually. It involves comparing two entirely separate things, almost like comparing apples and oranges. The net result of contrast effect bias is that we do not clarify or understand a thing, a person or a situation in relation to the reality itself, but rather in relation to something else that is totally different. Besides, your knowledge of the thing compared would depend on what standards you are using to make the comparison. The danger of contrast effect bias is that you fail to understand the merits of a thing in itself, but understand it in relation to the thing you compare. If you compare it with something better, you feel it as worse. And if you compare it with something worse, then you feel it as better. Let us give a few examples of contrast effect bias. Firstly, as an interviewer, when you interview candidates back to back, you tend to compare the performance of a candidate with the performance of the previous candidate. If you did the interview in a different order, your assessment of the candidate would have been entirely different. In any case, you use the performance of one candidate as the criterion to assess the performance of the other candidate. By using the performance of the other as a standard for your assessment, you fail to consider the merits of each candidate in themselves and independent of the other. Secondly, another example would be some persons in the workforce are happy to receive a meets expectations comment on their performance review. However, they feel inadequate when they find out most of their colleagues got exceeds expectations comment on their performance review. Though the first group got a decent review, they judge themselves more critically because they use their colleagues' performance review comment as the standard to compare their performance. These examples clearly indicate that the contrast effect bias makes you to judge yourself and others not based on your individual merit but in comparison with others. You can prevent or minimize the influence of contrast effect bias. Firstly, by creating a well-structured process with objective criteria for scoring the candidate's performance more consistent with the aims, goals, and purposes of the company. Secondly, by making multiple comparisons. Instead of coming to conclusion after making one comparison, you may compare something against different standards to broaden your perspective. Thirdly, by having a colleague, coach, or a mentor to challenge your thinking would help you to see your conclusion in a different light. 8. Disability bias. Though disability bias is an area often missing in discussions 
about unconscious biases it is prevalent and widespread as other biases we have talked about disability bias consists in many assumptions being made about people with disabilities that make them misunderstood treated differently being isolated in larger organizations and being looked down upon by business leaders managers and the workforce some of the biases about people with disabilities include they are not normal they are weak they are incompetent they cannot do what normal people do they need special treatment and the like researches have shown that general public feels uncomfortable talking to people with disabilities many of these assumptions are incorrect and people have these assumptions due to lack of education regarding disability and people live with these conditions as a result people with disabilities are reluctant to disclose their conditions and discuss the full extent of their challenges with others for fear of being considered weak incompetent and being isolated you can prevent or minimize disability bias and make the life of people with disabilities easier more comfortable in work as well as other situations firstly by educating the workforce at all levels on various disabilities the challenges people living with those disabilities may face and the strengths of having them part of the workforce secondly by training the workforce on having open and honest conversations and discussions about disability and supporting those who face disability challenges thirdly by reviewing and adapting the recruitment process policies and working environment and bring the needed changes in these areas in order to provide better care and support for people living with disabilities ninth gender or sexism bias gender bias consists in favoring people of one gender over the other this bias occurs when someone unconsciously associates certain stereotypes with different genders though it is believed that males are biased against females it is not necessarily true in every situation however there are also cases wherein women have demonstrated gender bias towards other women research has shown that the language used in creating the content of job descriptions is done in such a way so as to attract either male or female candidates hence people and organizations manifest their gender bias in subtle indirect and elusive manner so that it won't be easily recognized and identified thus gender bias may result in reduction of job and career advancement opportunities for certain section of population examples of gender bias would be the hiring team favoring male candidates over female candidates for a job even though females have similar skills and job experience as the males secondly another well known and common example is gender pay gap that is male workforce being paid higher salary than female workforce for similar jobs in 2021 the average median salary for men is about 18% higher than the salary paid to women gender bias towards women leads to a number of discriminations particularly in the context of their workplace to mention a few pregnancy discrimination women requiring wearing makeup or high heels women being asked to take the minutes in meeting women being seen as not suitable for physically demanding role and the like gender bias can be prevented or at least minimized firstly by setting gender neutral recruitment standards 
This can be done by profiling the ideal candidates by defining and indicating their characteristics ahead of time and evaluating the candidates before selection using the set standards. Secondly, by training recruitment staff. This would help the staff to debunk myths about gender differences and ensure objective recruitment and appraisal process. Thirdly, by using gender-friendly language and terminology in creating the content of job descriptions. This can open the job for more diverse pool of candidates, both male and female. Fourthly, by creating diversity goals. You can create a more gender-balanced team besides opening leadership position for women. Finally, by setting up equitable company policies regarding employee benefits and flexible working schedules, which can guarantee equal opportunities for both male and female workforce. We have spoken about three unconscious and conscious biases, namely contrast effect bias, disability bias, and gender or sexism bias. We need to take time to reflect and become aware if any of the above biases are operative in any sphere of our life and affect our unconscious thought processes and conscious decision making. The greater is our awareness of these biases, the greater can we prevent their influence in our everyday living, thereby make life better for all. We will continue our analysis of preventing the impact of unconscious and conscious biases by elaborating a few other common biases in the next episode. Thank you for watching this video. Stay blessed until we see you again with another video.